You might see on the screen, Elizabeth Zinger. She's uh, my counterpart here, another band director. So your children will be very lucky. They'll have two band teachers for next school year. Um, this is a very exciting time of year and we're so excited to meet your young musician. So our overview for tonight's webinar meeting. Um, we introduce, introduce ourselves, but we wanna introduce the music class band as well. So that way you get to know more about what band looks like here at our school. We're gonna demonstrate all the instruments that your child may be able to play. Um, talk you through how the selection process goes at our school for choosing an instrument, as well as how to, actually how to acquire that physical instrument, lesson book, et cetera. Um, we're gonna go through our summer band program here and talk about summer school lessons, as well as what band looks like in the fall. And then finally, remember to use that Q&A to ask us any questions as we get going that you have about band. So rarely soon, everybody, um, in fact, it's this Monday, you're gonna be receiving an email from Infinite Campus. That's what our office ladies use to reach out to all of our families. And this simple form is gonna ask you to put your name, your child's name, as well as select one music class choice for next school year. So here at Wanakee Intermediate School, we have four choices band, choir, orchestra, and general music. So once again, on Monday, that really important form is going to be sent out to all families. Your child's mission is to talk with you as a family unit and to select one um, music class choice that they are excited for and wanna try for next school year. So band class is a class that meets every other day. And in fact, I am in room 113 right now and this is a large ensemble room. They meet in this room that you see behind me every other day. So our school has a six day cycle. Large group band is in days one, three, and five. On the six day cycle, day one, two, three, four, five, six, your child will be um, assigned one of those days for a small group instruction lesson. So for example, um, today was a uh, day four and period seven, I had a small group trumpet lesson. So it will depend on the instrument your child plays and we will communicate when those small group lessons meet. Um, it is possible for your child to take a combination of performing classes, uh, so for example, we have a couple students in band and orchestra or band and choir, but those students do experience some loss of academic time. So a lot of the time that they get the IE time, if they are double music gets taken away, they go to um, one of their music classes actually meets during that IE time, as well as um, the need to have their small group lesson comes from that time as well. So if your child is interested in say band in choir or band in orchestra, please reach out to me, okay? I will put your name on what's called our doublers list. We will um, get confirmation, not only from your child's current homeroom teacher, um, but from Mr. Momarts and our administrators here as well. And we will be in contact with you. Our music class selection form then, so it's gonna be sent out this Monday, the um, choice selection will be due by Tuesday, March 15th. So if you have your calendar out, I highly recommend um, writing that date down. All right, well, the, here's a uh, part that you've probably been waiting for. What instruments can my child play and band? So I'm gonna push my play button. Our children made some videos for you. And I'm gonna hope my sound will share everybody. I'm gonna check one setting really quick. Aha, here you go. Hi, my name is Luke, and I think you should join band and play the flute. I am going to play the song William Tell to show you what my instrument sounds like. <laughs> Hello, 
my name is Brooklyn, and I think you should join band and play the clarinet. I'm going to play the song Rolling Along to show you what my instrument sounds like. So here we go. clarinet and I hope you want to play it. Hi, my name's Alina. I think you should join band and play the saxophone. To show you what my instrument sounds like, I'm going to be playing the song Doodle All Day. <laughs> and I think you should join band and play the trumpet. I am going to play the song Hot Cross Buns to show you what my instrument sounds like. trumpet is a very unique instrument. It has a lot of air that you need to be putting into the instrument. And that's kind of a tutorial on why you should join band. So thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Owen, and I'm going to show you the trombone today. Personally, I think you should play it when you get in band because you can play low notes like this. We can also play high notes like this. Which I think is really cool for an instrument. But I'm gonna play Mozart Melody. You might recognize it from a different song that you know for sure. Here goes nothing. So that's a trombone. Uh, I hope you have a great day, and I hope you play trombone next year. Hi, my name's Henry, and I think you should join band and play the baritone. Here it is. I'm going to show you the song Jingle Bells to show you what, kind of what my instrument sounds like. I'm going to use these three knobs to show you what it sounds like, and I'm going to blow into this mouthpiece. Here we go. <laughs> Jingle Bells. I hope you choose to play the baritone. Y eso Bye fue now. la canción de Jingle Bells. Es Espero que toque el baritono. Um, my name is Owen Murphy, Yo and I think you should Yo play que debe. the percussion. I'm going to play the song Astronomia to show you what my instrument sounds like. Also, you might know this song as the Coffin Dance. <laughs>
thank you for um, watching. And I hope this gives everybody an idea of all the instruments that are part of our band program here. I'm gonna now turn it over to my counterpart, Elizabeth Zinger, who will talk more about the instruments for band. Evening, and thanks so much for being here. We're just so excited to tell you about this amazing opportunity for your students. So as you saw in the video, the instruments we start students on are flute, clarinet, alto saxophone, those are the woodwind instruments, trumpet, trombone, baritone, those are the brass instruments, and percussion. And percussion does include mallets and drums. So as you saw Owen in the video doing the xylophone, the mallets, that is a huge part of what we do at first. Percussion is not just, hey, I want to be a drummer. There is a lot that goes into being a percussionist. So that's something that you should talk with your student about if they're really interested in doing it. They have to learn mallets because that's how we are able to read music and how we can join the rest of the band in learning together. As well as you have to be a person who can kind of sit and wait and stay focused in band pieces because percussion doesn't play every single second. So if that is not something for you, think about choosing maybe one of the other instruments that does get to play for most of the song. The other instruments that some of you may be familiar with, like bass, clarinet, tenor saxophone, French horn, bassoon, oboe, etc. We do those later on. You have to start on one of these more basic instruments and that knowledge then definitely transfers if you are interested in doing it. So say your student really wants to play tuba, they should start on baritone. And then we'll ask them about now in March about who's interested in transitioning to those other instruments. All right, if you wanna advance the slide, my friend. Awesome, so how in the world am I gonna choose? I don't know, I just learned about those instruments tonight. So if your student is at all interested in signing up for or trying out for band, please have them sign up for band because once they're signed up, we get their name and we can do this thing called a mouthpiece fitting. So that's a time when we get together with your student and we let them try the different mouthpieces, the place where they make music, for the different instruments, because everyone's facial structure is different, everyone's teeth, mouth, lips. Some people will find instant success with some instruments and have a little more of a challenge trying to get music happen on others. So we, if at all possible, try to get a student aligned with the one that they have instant success on, because when they get the main instrument, they're gonna have more instant success. That doesn't mean that if they had their heart set on playing flute and couldn't make the flute mouthpiece work, that they can't choose flutes. As a flute player, I know sometimes that's tricky. It just means they might have to put in a little bit of extra practice time at first to make it work. But once they get it, they can take off just as fast as any other student who did have instant success. So these fittings are gonna happen during the school day. You don't have to make an extra trip. Um, and they're gonna be done, um, your student will be pulled out of their music elective to make that happen. Once they get that trial of all the different mouthpieces, we'll send home a piece of paper saying the top two instruments according to our expert ears and knowledge that we think your student would be a fantastic fit for. They don't have to decide as soon as we hand them the paper. We actually, the goal is to decide by May 1st. And if you have any questions about that, your student comes home and they have questions, please just reach out to us. We've been doing it for a long time and we wanna make sure that not only is your student super excited, but they're comfortable with their choice. So after the fittings are complete, we're gonna email you to the email that you have in Infinite Campus, a digital form. On that form, we'll ask you to finalize your instrument choice and give you the option to schedule a conference with either Mrs. Swank or myself, Mrs. Zinger. That way, if you have questions going forward or concerned or need another um, appointment to try those mouthpieces just one more time, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Mrs. Swank, who's gonna take you through the next step of the instrument process. Thanks, Mrs. Zinger. 
All right, so once you have filled out that selection form and discussed what that instrument is that your child's gonna play, the next step then is to acquire an instrument. A majority of our students here, especially this year, play on a leased instrument for a period of time. This is what we highly recommend. Um, as we do have a Ward Brat store representative who comes to our school every single week. So we don't recommend purchasing, going out right, right after the fitting and purchasing an instrument right away. Um, we're gonna later learn about a really awesome program that Rob Smith, our store rep, he's gonna talk about. So say if you like, well, don't feel quite comfortable renting, we, we would prefer purchasing. Well, Ward Brett also, besides the rental program, has a purchasing program that we think is just first class and it's amazing. So that those details will come really, really soon. So um, make sure though, if you are going to be purchasing an instrument to please talk with a band teacher, either me or Mrs. Singer before making that purchase because we wanna help you find the best quality instrument for for your young musicians. Because on the market, there are so many choices out there and not all instruments are made um, with the same caliber and some don't even sound good. And you know, we're experts in our field and we're gonna help steer you towards not only cost-effective instruments, but instruments made with quality parts and that sound really good. And your child will have um, you know instant success on and not have the obstacle of a broken instrument instrument or one that has faulty keys, for example. If you do have an instrument in your family, which a lot of our current band students do, we recommend first taking it in to a music store such as where brought music to be inspected for good playing condition. So just think of the picture of the basketball over there. It's still a basketball, right? But that basketball is flat. If you give it to your child, they're going to look at it and go, okay, a, they're going to try to dribble it, but they're not going to have a lot of success on it, right? It's going to be really hard for them to try to dribble that flat ball. Same thing with an instrument that is, has been in your family for years that hasn't been inspected and looked over for playing condition. They might struggle to produce a sound when a simple adjustment and realignment of, say, the keys could make it a lot easier for them to learn. So just in the end, we really want your child to be successful. And the way, the two ways to do that is making sure that if you have an instrument in the family to get into a um, repair service such as Ward Brought to be inspected. And like I said above, if you are purchasing an instrument, um, which we recommend waiting to do, um, to please talk with a band teacher before making that decision. Um, another thing just to throw out there about WordBrot's um, repair program, which we highly recommend, is it, um, sorry, the rental program, is it becomes, it comes with a repair plan because as beginners, and I'm telling you this, as beginners, accidents do happen. I cannot count on my hands how many mouthpieces have been dropped and chipped this year. And the benefit of renting an instrument is that, hey, if those accidents happen, you're not going to be shelling out a lot of money <laughs> for those accidents. And trust us, Mrs. Zinger and I have seen a lot of accidents this school year. So this, this is the route that we recommend. Um, there are two instruments for sixth grade band that do not rent. And these instruments are baritones. They are rented from the school because the size and the cost of the instrument for $100 per year. And percussionists. So in our um, band room, we do have lots of equipment like xylophones. We have handheld percussions like maracas and triangles. And we have crash cymbals. There's just a ton of percussion instruments that go through a lot of wear and tear due to the large amount of students we have playing them. So for percussion, there is a $50 user fee um, for those instruments in addition to having their percussion kits, their own instruments at home. We're now gonna invite our store rep, his name is Rob Smith. He's here with us tonight. He is the person, he comes to our school every single week. Say your child does have a repair on um, their instrument. He's the one we give your child's instrument to. He takes it to the store to be looked over and uh, inspected and returned. Um, so just to let you know about Word Brought, they 
visit our school frequently and you know you're free to to go wherever you want to get an instrument but we do prefer word brought um, just because of the excellent service they provide to our school and then at the bottom to everybody please note that there is a website so if you want to check that out during or after our webinar it's wordbrought.com all right, thank you for uh, having me here tonight. I am Rob Smith from More Brown Music. Happy to be here and uh, I'm excited about a new uh, rental season coming up. And uh, this will be my 37th rental season. So quite a few uh, for me, but uh, everyone is exciting. And I'm very excited about this one as well. Um, at Ward Brown, we actually have three ways to help you get an instrument. And I'm gonna be talking about all three of them tonight. The first one and probably the most popular and the easiest to do is renting an instrument. We rent the instruments on a month to month basis. Uh, it's month to month, you can cancel at any time. You're obligated only one month at a time. Uh, price includes our maintenance and repair. Should anything happen to the instrument while it's in your possession, we repair it at no extra cost to you. It's month to month, so you can cancel any time. Um, should anything happen, like I said, we give you, uh, we can give you a free loaner, so you're not without an instrument at any time. Um, that's one of the benefits of the rental program. Uh, you're not owning the instrument; you're paying to use our instrument. So that instrument is strictly to use and you're paying that fee to use that instrument on a monthly basis. When you do want to purchase an instrument, we have two other options for you. The, the second choice is we do sell new instruments at Warbrot. We sell them at a discount off the retail price. And uh, when you buy a new instrument from Warbrot, student line instrument, we offer what's called a guaranteed buyback program. Anytime within the next two years, should your child decide maybe they don't want to keep playing the instrument or anything like that, we guarantee we'll buy that instrument back from you. We'll buy it back for the month you paid for it, minus 4% of what you paid for it each month that you own it. So it allows you to own your own instrument, but if it doesn't work out, you're not stuck with it. We guarantee we'll buy it back. It's not going to end up in the closet or at the next garage sale next summer. Uh, so uh, we'll find a good home for it and, and uh, um, buy that back from you. Also, if your child is excelling good on the instrument, we can trade that instrument in to the next uh, level up and get them up to a step up instrument. So uh, the, the guaranteed buyback works really in a double, uh, double benefit program that way. And the third choice that we offer to, to get an instrument is um, one that uh, we like quite a bit is our used instruments. We offer a used instrument marketplace. I want to tell you all the excitement around the used instrument marketplace right now. Um, we're under construction right now on the used marketplace uh, on our website right now. So don't get excited about looking for it tonight, but uh, um, it is there. Um, and we will have it uh, back up and running in a week or two. Um, we're busy putting more instruments into it and uh, getting ready for uh, the spring rental season. So uh, um, if you are interested in a, a, a used instrument, uh, you can contact me or call directly to the store. My information is on the, on the flyers and uh, um, you can get directly uh, um, a hold of me and I can tell you what we have available for used instruments. Um, besides uh, instruments, uh, um, uh, as far as renting, or purchasing an instrument, there are accessories that you're needed as well. And uh, as you can see on the screen right there, um, each instrument has specific accessories that uh, the teachers want you to have with that instrument to make that instrument work properly. Uh, things that are included in woodwind instruments like reeds and swabs and things that help uh, take care of the instrument and are needed to make the sound with the instrument. So those are uh, recommended uh, and required uh, um, lists of, uh, um, of each instrument. And uh, when you rent an instrument, you can add that right on to um, the, uh, um, you can add that right on to the rental and everything gets delivered by me right out to the school. Um, as far as acquiring an instrument, if you want to rent an instrument, uh, you can do that right online at wardbrot.com. Go right to rent an instrument. Uh, check for school Wanakee, Wanakee Intermediate, and then um, 
type in what instrument you want to do and everything will prompt. All the accessories will add there and you can just click on them and add them to the list. Everything is really made easy and, and uh, all in just one swoop. And then everything gets delivered right out to the school um, when lessons start. Um, it's important to, uh, once you're ready to select an instrument, do it as soon as possible so we can reserve that instrument and have your child's instrument here in time for when lessons start in the summer. Um, as far as if you have an instrument already, um, yes, get that instrument into the store. Um, I can bring the instrument back out to the school for you. And uh, uh, there is a place right on the um, rent an instrument area that uh, has just the accessories only. And you can purchase all the accessories and then everything gets delivered out to the school as well. So um, feel free to uh, email me or call me with any uh, questions that we don't answer tonight. And uh, I look forward to uh, working closely with y'all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. Rob is amazing, everybody. Oh, and my lights just turned off, so ignore my dark room. Um, Rob is amazing, everybody. He is like the superhero of our school. So anything that needs to be taken in and any supplies that needs to be delivered, he drops right off here. Uh, Mrs. Zinger, I'm going to go wave my hands for my automatic lights in my classroom. I'll have you start the next slide, and I'll jump right in. No problem, Mrs. Link. So how we start instruments here in Wanakee, if you're able, we have summer school. Now, if you can't be in summer school, that's okay. You can still do band. If you can only come for one or two weeks in the summer, that's also okay. Any time you can get there in the summer to get more, more time with your instrument will help you when you come back in the fall. Take it away, Mrs. Swink. Thanks, Mrs. Zinger. Yes, like Mrs. Zinger says, it doesn't matter how many of the lessons, um, we just love having your child there, okay? So don't let that deter you from signing up for summer band. Um, it's six weeks starting on Monday, June 20th through um, Thursday, July, I believe that is 28th over there. There are two lessons per week. So your child will have their band lesson Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. So like Mrs. Zinger was saying, um, they don't have to be enrolled in the full summer school program to be part of the band lessons. They can come just for summer band lessons. In fact, we had quite a few students choose that option last summer for summer school. Um, summer school online registration. Here's another date, okay, for your calendar. Um, it is, and sorry, my Zoom window is right over that date. There we go. It is Tuesday. Tuesday, April 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. So just mark that day on your calendar. Um, the intermediate school classes for summer school enrollment does open. And another really important date to put on your calendar is May 13th. So that registration for summer band lessons does close at noon on that date, May 13th. So make sure you get your child registered for lessons before then. Um, summer lessons are a lot of fun. Your child's gonna be really excited to start learning their new instruments and it's small group instruction. So we only have like three to five students per group. So they get um, you know all the attention and um, the help right? It's a, it's a hands-on learning experience. So those small groups are going to be very beneficial for having a very successful start to learning that instrument. Um, how does that work then, especially if they're just there for band or if they're um, having a full summer school class load? Well, good question. So we're going to hopefully help you answer or that. So students are pulled from either the first or second half of the morning classes. So during normal summer school, if you have a full um, schedule, you have three class periods that are 70 minutes each. So the lessons will be half of that period, so 35 minutes. So we had, for example, last year we had a student pulled from their first block fitness class and they had um, the first half of that class. When that, when that lesson is over, that 
student went back to their fitness class after their band lesson was over. So it depends if they start with us for that first half or end with us, um, which class they go back to. But don't worry, we will have all that information and we have some student helpers too that help the students get from class to class. So don't feel intimidated by that whatsoever. It's a full hands on deck approach to summer school. Um, lessons can be taken after the other class times. So we do have a sort of after summer school um, block. It's a fourth block um, that we do offer. So say if your child doesn't want to miss any of their summer school classes, um, but the kind of um, thing to really note about that though is that if you're relying on the bus for transportation taking that um, fourth block is not available so students taking that block after the three morning classes do need to have a ride back home um, like I said before they don't have to be in a full case, uh, you know, summer school class load to do their lessons. Um, but if your child is taking a full summer school schedule, that's when that bus transportation is available. Um, any more questions that you do have personally about summer school, please free, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am the summer school coordinator for this coming up summer. So I would be happy to assist you with any questions or concerns you may have. So just make sure in your calendar you have those two dates that I mentioned before, and we should be good to go. All right, Mrs. Zinger, take it away. So now that you are as excited for your student to be in band as they are, what does that even mean for next year? So as Mrs. Swank touched on in the introduction, we have band every other day and we give uh, schedules to students so that they can remember. It only takes a couple of weeks to kind of get in the routine of it, maybe three, um, and then it just becomes a regular thing. Then they will have a small group instruction once every six days. So then they'll get an assignment, hey, you as a flute player are gonna come on every day too. And those small group instruction is pulled from the IE time. And you guys are probably familiar with IE time because you currently have that. So that's when our small group instruction is once every six days. The other part that's important for students is to be able to practice at home. Now, when your kid first learns their instrument, they need a space at home where they can be loud because beginning a new instrument is a kind of a loud endeavor. They get more control and it becomes more melodic as they learn, but definitely in the beginning, you should have some place where it is okay for them to make noise because that's what it is at first. Um, so as, as soon as you have that learning space set up for them, then they can make sure that that's where they keep their at home supplies, their music stand. So they always know where they can go to practice. As far as supplies go, um, if you need extra during the year, because you order all those supplies when you rent your instrument or go online and just pick the supply list, people who play clarinet, saxophone, they're gonna go through things called reads and that's a consumable item. They're gonna need to buy more. So online, you can always go to Ward Brat. You can order the supplies you need and it can be delivered directly to our school. So you don't have to go out to Fitchburg if you don't want. You can just order it and it's delivered here. Um, as far as repairs go, if you are renting, it's included in your rental. We just email Rob, we tell him what we need. He brings stuff in every Tuesday is when he's here. If you have your own instrument and it breaks during the year, we can also get that delivered from our school to Rob. They bring it to the shop, they call you with an estimate, you pay them over the phone, and they send the instrument back when it's repaired. It's a really lovely service that Ward Brought does for our school. So you can definitely take advantage of that. And then the biggest picture is, when do I get to hear what my kid is learning? Those are our concerts. And we have three during the year. We have a demonstration concert to let you know what we've been learning in October. That would be October 20th of this year. Um, we have a winter concert, which is January 31st, and then a spring concert, which is May 16th. They have typically in the past been at 630, but that time could change just based on numbers and the space that we have available to us. 
So after you go through the band program here at the intermediate school, what comes next? So just so you know what the future looks like, at the middle school, they add some more opportunities for your students learning. You can choose to do jazz band, and I'm a co-teacher for that. You can choose to do solo and ensemble, which is a place where you can get a private instruction on preparing a solo or preparing a small group like a duet or a trio to play for the solo and ensemble festival. I'm also a coach for that over at the middle school. And then they also have a marching unit toward the end of the year. Um, I know that the eighth graders get to play in the stands with the high schoolers at a football game. So that's something also to look forward to. And then once you go from the middle school to the high school, even more opportunities happen. You have the pep band, the marching band that you see on the fields at football. Um, you can play in the pit orchestra for their musicals that they do. And then they also have lots of groups and opportunities to play outside of the school day. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Mrs. Swing for a recap of our night. Thanks, Mrs. Zinger. So just remember, our families out there, selecting an instrument, it's a process. So we'll have those mouthpiece fittings, like we said before, in April. And we're going to send that information home about the top two instruments that best fit your child. And then after that, remember, there will be a final decision form to fill out with that instrument selection choice. Tonight, we talked about acquiring an instrument, which we highly recommend to Ward Brought and their awesome service to our school. We've also went through summer lessons. Remember, registration ends on um, May 13th. And then remember in fall, um, band starts in fall. And Mrs. Zinger was talking about what being in band in the fall is really all about. We want to thank you all so much for coming to our webinar this evening. So now is the time of the webinar where we'll start to check the Q&A and to answer any questions that you may have about band. So we're going to open it up, give us a couple seconds to get that situated, and we'll start answering um, some questions. So my first question comes from Josie. And the question is, um, is the keyboard one of the instruments for band that a student can choose? That's a really great question, Josie. So um, the keyboard, like the piano, is not an option that we normally have in band. So we do have percussion, like you saw in the instrument demonstration video that Owen played. He played a keyboard instrument called a xylophone. So the xylophone is the closest instrument that we do have in band that's related to the keyboard. Um, another question comes from Laura. What happens if so many people want a certain instrument? Are you asked to choose another? All right, Mrs. Zinger, I'm going to um, turn this question over to you. So get ready. Okay, so it depends on what instrument your kid was um, extremely excited to play. So we do run into equipment issues, especially in the percussion section. We only have so many instruments, and it is already a section where kids have to sit. If you play triangle, there may not be triangle parts for the whole piece. So, but if they wanna play clarinet and we can have as many numbers in clarinet as we want, there's no such thing as too many clarinets in a band. There's plenty of parts to go around. So that is very instrument dependent. Um, and if it happens that we have all of a sudden all these alto saxophones, we would just talk to you and your student about what that might mean. And if they're okay with it, we say, sure, go ahead and join up. All right. So Mrs. Swank, Megan looked like she had a question. If they're in orchestra, can they participate in band? Do you want to take that one? I will. Thank you so much, Mrs. Zinger. So to answer Megan's question, the um, answer is yes. So if they're currently in orchestra with Mr. Steen. They are able to um, to request to be in what's called double music, to be a music doubler. So if that is a desire of your student, Megan, I would say um, email me or Mrs. Um, Sassman Herrick 
if that is your child's music te current music teacher in fifth grade and request that your child does double music. We'll then take your request to your child's fifth grade music teacher, as well as Mr. Momarts. So those are the um, other you know, set of eyes that we use to um, get the seal of approval for our students to get double music, just because like we talked about before, it does result in a loss of IE time. So we're just gonna, um, you know, just to make sure that it's the best choice for um, our students academically, as well as what they love musically as well. All right, we have um, a question from Everly. Will braces impact my mouthpiece setting? Hey there, Everly, thanks for your question. Um, so braces might be a complication for a couple of the mouthpieces, but good news is that if you go through your fitting, you'll find out which mouthpieces feel better on your mouth. So with the braces, um, some, some mouthpieces might feel better. Some might feel like they're harder to play. So I would just say, um, you know, the mouthpiece fitting, you get to try all the instruments, but just um, know that some might feel more cozy. Um, on your mouth and your facial structure than others will. Thanks for your question. All right, Mrs. Zinger, Scott is asking us generally, how much practice time do you expect the students to put in at home? That is an awesome question. So in order to get good at any new skill, you need to practice outside of the day. So we ask kids to practice in short amount of times, especially at first. So small amounts of practice more often is better. Your mouth's not gonna be used to the way that you're asking it to be performed with your new instrument. It's gonna get tired and sore. And actually, if you play it too long, it could actually hurt. So 10 to 15 minutes, maybe three times a week would be an excellent like starting practice. Hopefully your kid's so excited they wanna practice 10 minutes every day of the week. But in order to continue to be successful, I would aim for 10 to 15 minutes at first, three-ish times a week. Um, the next one is how do you take small group lessons if you're a toddler? Well, we work with, if you're a doubler in orchestra, we work with Mr. Steen to make sure that during your IE time, we are scheduling you not at the same time as your orchestra lesson in IE. So you're not scheduled during, usually during your ensemble time or your other lesson. If you are choosing to be a doubler in choir, there is not a pullout lesson right now for choir. So that's only if you're a concern if you're an orchestra and band doubler, and we're really good at working together to make it work for you. Um, someone wants to know how loud the trumpet is, Mrs. Swank. You want to let them know? Hey there, Joe and Brianna. Yeah, the trumpet is a pretty noisy instrument. So on a scale of like the quietest instrument ever and the loudest instrument ever, like I'd say, you know, overall it's, it's a generally louder instrument. So if you choose instruments like the flute and clarinet, those are going to be like way softer um than like the trumpet or the alto saxophone so that's kind of my scale of loudness um just to answer your question and thank you for doing so all right sounds like we kind of already answered rachel's question would they be able to do it at the same time so yep so that doubler process just reach out to your current fifth grade music teacher and let them know you're interested in double music next question comes from monica are the kids locked into the instrument chosen at the beginning of the year? Or is there an option at some point to switch if they are just not enjoying or succeeding at the instrument initially chosen? What a wonderful question, Monica. So both Mrs. Zinger and I, you know, believe that we want to do what's best for the student. So we kind of take that on a case by case basis. So say, you know, they are trying their heart out at an instrument, but they're still not making quite the sound or it's not quite clicking in the way that is getting in their way of actually enjoying, right? Being part of the band. Then that's a discussion that we have with the student and with the families. And we love to help our um, students find then um, a better fit. So just to answer your question, um, it's a case by case basis. And you know, our philosophy is we just want your student to enjoy band and um, helping them find the instrument that's going to fit them the best. All right. And then one more question, everybody looks like it's in our Q&A. 
Do I have to choose two instruments if I'm sure of what I want to play? Great question, Everly. So once you have your mouthpiece fitting, we do send you home with the top two instruments just to consider. Um, on the instrument selection form, you know, we may ask for you to put your instrument choice and maybe a second instrument choice. You know, that's something that we will ask of everybody. So we just ask to um, really think about which ones you, one that you like the best, right? And another one, so say we do have like a hundred saxophones, like, oh, that's not gonna sound good in our band. We might start talking to those instruments that have so many players or say not enough percussion equipment, right? And that secondary choice then would be um, one of your other options for band. So I hope that answers your question, Everly. Ms. Link, I'm going to piggyback on that. So I'm going to say, if we are asking you to choose your secondary instrument, there will be a conversation that's being happening with your family. It's not just all of a sudden you said, I want to play this and we put you down for your secondary instrument. It won't be a surprise like that. It's just to invite a conversation to let you know if what, what's going on with your first choice. And the other cool thing about instrument fitting and asking you to pick two is that you probably have never tried a trombone mouthpiece before. You don't know what that feels like. You may try it and be like, whoa, I love that. I had no idea I would love that, but I totally do. And I'm totally changing my mind. It happens all the time. So just keep your mind open to that. It's fantastic that you have a very clear idea of what you want to do, but just be open to maybe that might change. Thanks, Mrs. Swank. Thanks, Mrs. Zinger. Yes, that's very insightful, and I appreciate some of that insight. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being part of our webinar. We are very excited to meet you um, and your young musician. Once more, I want to give a big shout out to Rob Smith for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, we're just going to hang tight here just for another couple minutes if you have any um, more questions for us. Um, feel free to also reach out. Oh, there's my lights again. <laughs> reach out through email to contact either me, Katie Swank, or Elizabeth Zinger. Ms. Swank, there are a couple more questions in the Q&A for you. Thanks, Anne. Yep. All right, Mrs. Zinger, take it away. Okay, so Mrs. Swank, I'm going to take the second question um, because I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know anyone who has doubled with general music. Um, so I'm not quite sure if that's an option, but Mrs. Swank has taught here in this district a little longer, so I'm going to let her take that one. Can a student try orchestra in sixth grade and then try band in seventh grade? Well, that's a little trickier because orchestra has already been going. So they already have a year of learning under their belt as fifth graders. So if they're already in orchestra and they want to continue in orchestra, that's okay, that's a thing. But it's hard sometimes to start band when everyone else has had a full year of experience. So if that is something that you're worried about your student doubling, but you wanna give them a try for band later, there are avenues with which you can join, but you're gonna to have to do some time on your own, maybe private lessons in addition to summer school to get caught up in that learning so you're ready to join um, students again in the fall of seventh grade. And then Mrs. Swank, if you want to take that double with general music, that would be awesome because I honestly don't know the answer. All right. Thank you for your question. So general music, unfortunately, is the only class option here that we do not allow the double for in general music. It's just the way our schedule here is set up um, and it just doesn't allow a student to double with that as their choice. So band choir, band orchestra, um, you know, those are the ones that are the double. So general music is not. Thank you. Um, um, Mrs. Joe, Swank, oh, yep. do you mind if I dub, uh, jump on that? Because I just wanna let that family know that once they go off to the middle school in seventh grade, it will be an option to double band with general music. So if you think your student's gonna miss out on general music, they can take band this year. So they're all set to go in seventh grade. And then it's a very easy process actually at the middle school in seventh to do two musics. So you can double band and general music. I just wanna put that in the space, thanks. 
Yes, thanks for that insight. Everybody, Mrs. Zinger has good insight into that middle school schedule. We appreciate that. Uh, Josie, so if my son did want to learn the keyboard, would it be outside of school only or does orchestra use a keyboard? board. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, we do not have a piano instructor here at the intermediate school. So we don't have any keyboard classes or piano classes. Um, orchestra does not use the keyboard as an instrument. Orchestra uses violin, viola, cello, and the bass. So just to answer your question, my advice would be to seek a piano teacher um, outside we have a couple, you know, private teachers in the Wanakee area. So feel free to email me for a list of private piano teachers. I would be glad to provide you with that list. Um, Everly has a question. If we have an orchestra locker, will we have another for band? Hello, Everly. And the answer to your question is yes. So you will have a locker say you play the violin you'll have a violin locker and say you play the clarinet you will have a clarinet locker as well so two lockers one for orchestra one for band both with your name on it and what instrument you play um natalie in sixth grade if you don't take general music is it replaced by french Oh man, Nat Natalie, that's a really tough question. I am not versed in the French schedule here at Wanakee Intermediate School. Do you know the French scheduling process, Mrs. Zinger? I will tell you, in sixth grade, you have to choose one music. So if you're like, I am not gonna do band, orchestra, or choir, you have to take general music. So you have to take either a performing group or general music. French is a separate class typically here at the middle school. So they don't kind of intersect. Um, it's not like at the middle school where you have all those options that kind of you have to choose from. But yes, everyone has to take at least one music. Um, Natalie, if you wanna type in more question, if that didn't answer your question, I'd be willing to hang on just to see what your reply is. Thank you very much, Mrs. Singer. Um, like we said, we'll be here just for a couple more minutes. If you have those questions that are popping into your mind right now of things you forgot to ask. Otherwise, if you are ready just to give us a wave that we cannot see goodbye, we are so happy to have um, met you tonight. We look forward to eventually meeting you all in person. Yes, thank you so much for sharing your time with us tonight to share about what is our favorite thing here at the Intermediate School. Again, like Mrs. Swank said, any questions, please reach out. We're more than happy to answer them. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much, everybody.